All right, cool, okay? All right, guys, okay? So, okay, today we are very fortunate to have Sam Ree from Endowers, okay? Hi, everybody. Endowers, when I started off friending them, first of all, they got z I don't think there were zero, zero, zero customers. Zero. <laughs> and we were in a small office and we were drawing Shop charts house. on Shop House. We were drawing charts, thinking of how to launch, how to whatsoever. From that day, which was about 2017, yeah. to now, and ours is now a mega company, mega company, okay? And uh, Sam and I have been friends for all these years, okay? And I'm so happy to see them grow from strength to strength, okay? Uh, you know what? And uh, this, this is now a mega successful person, and yet he's today, when I say see him, uh, he dressed up. Uh, more lock hook than I do, okay? Yeah, so 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 this goes back to my principle, uh, rich people uh, dress until uh, they are like a beggars, okay? So if you want to be rich, uh, okay? You know, this is a... This is a <laughs> okay, anyway, so jokes aside, jokes aside, okay? Jokes aside, we are, we are very, 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 very fortunate to have him. Today, I want to bring him in because, number one, can we share a bit of basics about money making or whatsoever? The second thing I want uh, him to also do is to have a very long Q&A with us, okay? So anyway, uh, Sam, you know, um, can you just take a, take a little bit of basic? I've always teach everybody, if you want to grow rich, there's a lot of ways, but a lot of people like investing in two things in Singapore. Number one, they like to buy property, okay? I'm nothing against that, right? They like property. And then number two is they like to buy Singapore stocks. They like to buy... Spec, uh, uh, they like buy stocks like Facebook, Google, Amazon, or whatever, Tesla, okay, China stock. Reads. And they like buy, I read, get a lot of dividends, you know. They like buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, right? The, the method that I've been sharing with everybody yeah, is I buy an S&P 500, okay, and I leave it there forever, right, forever, 10, 20, 30 years, okay? A lot of critics to this okay now this now and i tell people uh, you know you know all the other investment method you know yes you can make money but you need to be damn good okay so this is a guru he used to be a ceo of morgan stanley you know right Morgan Stanley investment investment management, investment management right he's got to be the best uh, right so maybe you can share with people whether my investment theory what do you think about it yourself uh? yeah Thank you, Lou, and uh, thanks, thanks everybody for joining us today. As, as Lou said, um, you know, we've been friends for a long time. He's been such a great supporter of ours and he's been so helpful. Uh, we've been on this journey together, uh, investing. And I have to say that even though I, I was a professional investor investing, you know, billions and tens of billions with Morgan Stanley, um, it doesn't matter. A lot of people, you know, work very professionally in investing. But when it comes to investing my own money, investing your own money, they don't always do what they preach. And that's a problem. And so when I was younger, I would make those mistakes more. As I grew older and wiser, I think uh, I've been able to manage my finances better. And one of the reasons Endowas was created was because we wanted to help individual investors. So when you're a big you know, a company like GIC, or if you're at Morgan Stanley, you get the benefit, a lot of advice, you know, a lot of like access to great products at low cost and, you know, everything is made up for you. So you don't have to like focus on anything other than making good investment decisions. And that's why you do well. But as an individual investor here in Singapore, and it's not just Singapore, Hong Kong, anywhere else, it's very difficult to invest because we don't get good advice. We don't get access to the best products. So stuff like the Omundi Fund that we're here to talk about as well, that's like helping solve individuals problems in accessing great products yeah and then the most important thing is cost like lowering cost of investment is absolutely essential because every fee that you pay is taken away from your returns and traditionally banks and brokers and you know these fund platforms as well they talk about oh no sales charges and low fees but it's just too much um i think for individuals especially even for cpf investing it was very very high before Endowas came along and, and we've lowered cost to, you know, a third or half of the cost that it used to be. So lowering cost is absolutely essential. But why, 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 why not buy Tesla? Why yeah. not buy Microsoft? Why buy Facebook? Why not yeah. invest in condominium in, a, you know, I don't know, in Passeries yeah. or Orchard or whatsoever? But why, why put money in, you know, in, in, in S&P 500 or Endowas or whatever? Yeah, um, and it's a good point. And, you know, investing in stocks is not a bad thing. 
Uh, but the problem is this, this phrase, putting all our eggs in one basket, right? What that means is that we're investing a lot of money, a big sum of our savings into a very small thing. And if that goes wrong, then your future is going to be not good, right? And especially these days, you see Silicon Valley Bank, a lot of people, a lot of you might have heard of it, a US bank went bankrupt, you know, collapsed. Uh, and you know, uh, lost a lot of money. Deposits, bank deposits, which are supposed to be safe, were lost. Um, and then Signature Bank and then Credit Suisse all went kind of under. UBS had to bail out, uh, and the Swiss government had to bail out Credit Suisse. Uh, what that means is that if you had put all your eggs in that one bank, like even Credit Suisse, which is a very reputable, famous bank, you invest all your money in Credit Suisse stock, thinking, oh, this has been around for 200 years, it's a great company, it's a Swiss company, how can you lose money on this? But you lost 90 something percent on that investment. Mm. And then it's very difficult to recover from a 98% loss, mm. right? No because chance. even if you double your money from two cents, no to four cents, you're still down 96%. <laughs> yeah. So it's impossible to recover from a blow up. And so as an individual investor, where you are investing for your future, and investing with very, very important like savings that you've worked so hard to you know, gather, you need to manage the risk you're taking. So you need to take the benefit of a lot of wisdom that has been gathered in the markets over history, things like diversification. So diversification means that you're not taking all your risk in one stock but, and not even one country or one sector, you're diversifying that across various different companies because there are a lot of great companies out there. You diversify across different geographies because sometimes US does well. Sometimes, look, China's recovering or you know, Latin America's coming back. You want to be exposed to all of the growth around the world and then all the different factors. For example, sometimes growth does well, technology does well. Sometimes you know, value does well and banks outperform. And, but if you diversify yourself and you own an S&P 500 or a global market index, then you're going to compound returns steadily without a lot of volatility, without risking your money going down to zero. How many percent a year? Uh, maybe long-term markets in S&P 500, MSCI, Acqui has generated at least 7%, if not at certain points in cycle, almost 10% over a decade or so. So 7 to 10% is actually a really good number. And if you compound that, remember the rule of 72, if you generate a 7.2% over 10 years, you double your money. Or you generate 10% over 7.7 .7 years, then that's doubling of money. Okay. How great is that? Doubling your money every 7 to 10 But years. if I invest in my, my money in an Orchard Road uh, uh, yes. house, you know, yeah. yeah, I would have made the same amount as well. Yeah, no, that's not true. That's not true. Yeah. If you look at the statistics, um, it feels like you've done really well, but obviously, uh, the headline numbers on returns, if you compound, not just one single property again, because you wouldn't have owned that particular property that went up the most. Mm. If you just do a general consensus real estate return, it's actually been less than 5%. Or compounded over many decades, that's a great return too. Some of them are as low as 3%. So, so, so not Mr. Lu say, uh, for those people uh, who are property Xiao, uh, Okay, not Mr. Lu say, uh, now experts say. Uh. But there's another important point though. Yep. Because markets tend to have some cycles, but overall, they continue to generate that 7, 10% over the long term. Yep. Property, it depends on the cycle. Like if you went in early, like you owned a landed property, you know, in like 20 years ago, then yeah, it's been amazing. Yeah. But what about the future? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Great companies will continue to generate returns because yeah. consumers will use great products yeah. and use great companies and they'll earn great earnings. Yeah. But property, we don't know what the future will hold because we're at such a high price and yeah. we cannot continue to go up. But everybody like believes that Singapore property will never crash, it will continue to rise forever. You but know? can it, that, that's, that's the point, it, it's not going to crash, maybe it, it probably won't, it's a great investment to a store value. I don't deny that, especially versus other markets like Hong Kong or other countries. But is it going to be able to generate consistently the 3-5% returns that it has in the past? That's a question that you need to ask. And not every property will do well. Okay. Yeah. All right, so good. there's a scarcity value, there's a demand and supply to every property, every segment of the property, and you need to be in the right segment to generate those returns. Okay.
All right, thank you, everybody on Facebook as well. Now, so now I want to ask now, okay? Now, the one that I always love, you know, I love the S&P fund, right? I, I've invested so much into the Lion Global S&P fund, fund okay? Uh, but recently, there's this fund called Amandi that just came out. And mm. I know you talk about it. We talk about it and prepare ourselves for a long time. The last time we did it was like one year ago, right? Mm. Uh, you all took quite a long time, but now it is ready. It's CPF investable, SRS investable, cash investable. Everybody is asking, why should we, uh, should we or should we not invest in the Mandi? And what other options are there and so on, right? You, you, you know, you're endowers, if you look at your, your website, oh, I love so many funds, you know, how on earth an average person, you know, it's like you go McDonald's, right? You know, wow, I've got so many choices, but in the end, you say cheeseburger, right? So can you please tell us now why, you know, we, we should invest in Mandi or should, what, what other funds you have in MSCI World? Mm. World Index, you have got uh, just uh, what what Black Rock, Bruno, yes, there's so Black many, Rock. right? Yep. All right, please tell us yeah. why should we go for a Mandi? Is it yeah. better? Yes. So first of all, I'd like to point out that there's in the world of finance before in Davos, there were two choices. One was the fund platforms like Fund Supermarket, Dollar Dex, and you know who's your poems, right? These kind of digital platforms that talk about low fees. And they have thousands of funds. Oh, no. That's like too much. Yeah. And we know from investing that too much choice is actually a bad thing for individuals. That's why Premium Mall selects the best products and put it to you. And Indawa selects the best investment funds and present it to you. So you must buy from Premium Mall. And Indawa. <laughs> so so that's only sure. 200 funds uh, out of 200. the thousands. Still a lot, man. Still a lot. How do you choose, man? But we choose only the best funds for each sector, each country, each choice, right? So when we, I have to tell a story. Yeah. And you know this story, Lou, but yeah. in 2017, when we started, we wanted to help individuals, especially CPF members, start investing well, yeah. right? The cost of investing in CPF was like 5, 6%. It was ridiculous. Crazy, man. Crazy. It's, uh, there's no way you can make money. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's almost fees. close to cheating, really. Yeah. It's criminal. Yeah. Yeah. Criminal, criminal. Yeah. But yeah. we lowered it to less than 1%. And one of the most important things we said was we needed to do was to introduce low-cost passive index funds. And can, can you explain why it's low-cost passive index funds? It's exactly what it says. Yeah. Well, it's low-cost. Yeah. Yeah. Second thing is passive means you don't have to do anything. Yeah. You just like follow the benchmark index and follow the market instead of like choosing stocks or trying to like make active allocation you just be passive. And the final thing is you're following an index like S&P 500 or the MSCI or Country World Index. So low cost passive index funds. And they're available in the US and developed markets at low cost, but at the time in CPF, there were none. There were none available. <laughs> yeah. I think a lot of good fund managers out there, but it's very difficult to you know, have a low cost index fund in a relatively small market like Singapore or Hong Kong you know, in the US where there's like hundreds of trillions of dollars, you can launch a fund and get it to, you know, billions. But in Singapore, the, the market was too small. Um, but also more importantly, the banks, you know, had a stranglehold on the distribution of funds. Um, and it was very difficult for fund managers to launch low cost funds. So it's a chicken and egg thing. They want to do it, but they didn't feel there was demand, especially in CPF. And then, you know, the people that wanted it, you know, didn't have the option to, so they didn't put money into it and, and bought these other more expensive and most often not very good mutual funds, uh, which underperformed. So we worked really hard with Lion Global at the time to introduce the lowest cost passive index fund, the first passive index funds in CPF back in 2017 when we launched the CPF Tiny service. Goodies. Yeah, back in 2017. And I was one of your first customer. First customer. And, you know, before you were paying how much? You were paying, I think, 70 basis points for that same fund. Same fund, 0.7%. Now it was down to 0.34% within Dawa. So Lou immediately moved it over yeah. and invested ever since and have done very well. But we knew there were better options out there. So we went to Amundi and BlackRock. To the BlackRock is the biggest US and global fund manager, biggest passive index fund manufacturer. They have a series called iShares that many people of you, many of you might know. And then Omundi is the biggest European fund manager. It's actually owned by Credit Agricole. How big are they? Oh, they're huge, trillion, like two trillion dollars of assets. Trillion? Yeah. What? There's so, more than Singapore's <laughs> there's more than Singapore's National Reserve. So yeah. 
So BlackRock is huge at nine trillion. Uh, they're number one. Amundi is, I think, definitely top ten. Two so, trillion. Yeah. How long have they been around? They've been around forever. They've been around for a long time. So they're owned by the two of the biggest uh, banks in uh, France. So it's a French company um, by Credit Agricole. Um, so Credit Agricole, like consolidated industry, brought a few fund managers together, and Amundi came into being. So and they, they won't collect, right? It used to be Credit Agricole Asset Management. And then they changed the name to Amundi. Amundi is a very well-known brand, and it's a very yeah. uh, good, How good stable company. is Amundi? You know? Oh, very stable. I mean, it's it's bigger. It's actually bigger than Morgan Stanley Investment Management that I used to work for. Morgan really? Stanley Investment Management is only one point something trillion. Amundi is much bigger than that. So very safe, very big. Uh, the biggest European fund manager and one of the biggest globally. So very very safe fund manager Amundi. So they will be. Uh, yeah, so they, they, they were the ones that helped us bring in the lowest cost fund. So this fund, the Mundi US Index Fund, 0.05%. It's almost free, man. It's almost free. 0.05%. How do they make money? It's the lowest cost of any fund that ever existed in Singapore. 0.05%. Percent. Percent for the fund. It's almost free. It's almost free. Yeah. It absolutely is. There's no fund cheaper in all of Singapore. Then what do you make? So they charge 0.05. Yeah. We charge uh, a fee on top of that. How much? Well, 0.3%. So it's, yeah. so it's combined? still cheaper combined than the Line Global or any fund that's... What's the combined that? Line Global right now? 0.65. So with with uh, with a Monday, you you're taking that half. almost half, basically. So that's the first thing. The, the second thing is BlackRock iShares. Okay. So BlackRock, we also work very well. BlackRock, with I've heard before. So Amundi and BlackRock, both of them, uh, we, so we launched the BlackRock iShares series of passive index funds at 0.08%, 0.1%. So the lowest cost that you can get access to in Singapore. And the most important thing here is that it's exclusive to endowments. Amundi like came and wanted to do things with CPF and launch this fund into CPF and uh, nobody else actually wanted the fund because the banks want to charge a lot of fees on top and if it's so low cost, there's no way of charging. So we cannot bypass you and go straight to Amundi, right? No, cannot. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So because we're the ones that brought them into Singapore and we moved assets into we promised them as to move assets into that company, into that fund, so that we can scale it and bring even cost even lower. And BlackRock, the same thing. We worked with them to bring that into Singapore. So Umundi is the only US index fund, the lowest cost fund ever to exist in Singapore. And we had it for uh, since last year, as Lou said. But last month, we finally got it into CPF. So, so Umundi versus Lion, uh, versus, okay, how does, uh, Amundi, apart from cost wise, but the performance wise, right? Uh, yeah. Do they are they are they like like also an S and P five hundred clone? Uh, do they yep. mirror S and P five hundred? Yes. Uh, how different are they? You know, whatever performance wise, you know, is there any difference? Yes. So um, the, the the all three funds, the Line Global, the Amundi, and the BlackRock, all like mimic the US like top five hundred companies, S and P five hundred. The reason BlackRock and Amundi, there's a difference in fees is because Amundi does not use the S&P 500 index. It uses a selective in index that is lower cost, which brings costs that low. But what if the so, performance is not like S&P 500? Yeah, but if you look at the performance, there's two things that in a low cost passive index strategy, there's two things we look at. One is the actual performance, and then the other one is the tracking error. So every day, how much does it deviate from the underlying index, which is S&P 500 or the selective US index? And the deviation is very, very low. So effectively, if you look at it long term, like even short term, a few months to one, one year to two years, uh, there are periods where it outperforms slightly or underperforms slightly, but largely it will be the same as the index return. And it's very similar to the S&P 500. So, so bottom line, does it or does it not mirror the S&P 500? It does. Absolutely. Ah. So, it's so, so it's 19, 99% correlation means ah. almost the same. Okay. And the most important thing, because it's not an active fund, but a passive fund, and it's an index fund, so S&P 500 or whatever the strategy is, we also have great MSCI World Index Fund, 
at 10 basis points, which sure. is great because it gives you diversification. For example, sure. Europe started out performing recently. Right? Sure. It did really well. It also sure. has Europe or Japan. Sure. So it gives you a bit more di di diversification into developed markets as a whole instead of just the US. Yeah. And those have done really well. And those also are available with Amundi and BlackRock. Right. So the BlackRock funds are even better, guys. Guys, guys, <laughs> one of your please. Even better because the BlackRock fund is an iShares um, the fund gives you the BlackRock funds uh, has uh, BlackRock funds is a replication by synthetic uh, futures and so what that means is that you know a lot of US funds have a lot of tax so there's a withholding tax for foreigners investing in the US of 30%. Now, all funds pay 30% on the dividends, on the dividends paid out. Okay. So it's S&P 500 pays out 2% dividend, 30% fee uh, tax means 0.6% fee. So you might have generated 5% or 10%, but you lost 0.6% on just the taxes. But how, how much dividends does S&P 500 give you? Roughly just under 2%. So we're rounding it up to 2%. So 2% of it go away, you're left with about 1.5. 1. 1.4. 1.4%. 1. Yeah. Okay. So 0 0.6, if you think about the fact that the management fee is 0 0.6, endowment fee is 0 0.3. 0 0.6 is like twice the endowment fees for nothing. You know, There's no reason to pay for it. But because the US system is such, we can't avoid it. But there is historically been one way, which is accessing the European Irish USITS funds, UCITS, USITS funds, which have a 50% discount on, with, on withholding tax. So you only pay 15%, 1-5%. But the BlackRock iShares is even better because, because you use a synthetic structure of mini futures, you actually don't pay a single cent of tax. So you're saving 0.6% on top. Totally. Totally. Lion Global, which is what I'm investing now, I got withholding tax of 30%. Yep. Basket, I didn't know. Okay, never mind. Then Amundi? Amundi is the same. Because 30% withholding tax, okay? And then now BlackRock iShare has? Zero. Kosong. Yeah. Okay. So some people mentioned the IVV and some of the, the US listed ETFs and then the USIS European listed USIS ETFs. So a lot of people you buy the USIS ETFs because they say, oh, 15% tax and therefore more efficient. This BlackRock iShares index fund is lower cost, is 0.08%, and also pays no, no withholding tax, zero. And therefore, well, it's been you able to generate better returns than any of the other ETFs. And you, you're mentioning what was synthetic what? Uh, so basically you can in, in buy English, in English. In English, when you say that you're buying the index, you have S&P 500, there yeah. is no index that you buy. Yeah. When you're buying the index, you buy 500 companies that make up the index. Correct. But in the US, they have a futures market. You buy the your futures Derivatives. Index. Okay. And the it's futures market, actually, you can buy the single futures. Sure. And that futures is going to replicate the return, exactly mimic the return of the S&P 500. How, is, how dangerous is this? It's not dangerous at all. Okay. Yeah, there's no, no risk. And BlackRock is, as I told you, $9 trillion asset manager. They've been running this iShares ETF index fund for a very long time. Is it uh, a leverage? No yeah. leverage. Okay. No leverage. It's counterparty. It's secure. There's no risk at all. And it's been running for a long time. Billions of assets under it. Uh, it's the way they manage it because it's most efficient. And they actually even uh, are able to generate better than index returns sometimes because of these reasons. I see. Okay. Um, so but the BlackRock iShares is not available for CPF. And that's why the Amundi is so attractive for CPF because for Amundi, the line global fee was higher and therefore lowering the fees by 0.3% is gonna really, really help you generate better returns over the long term because of the compounding effect of lower cost. So, so are you referring to Endowers iShare US Index Fund? That's right. That's a fund. Yes. But unfortunately, cannot use not, CPF. Not for CPF. But SRS okay. SRS okay. Okay. And cash. And cash. Yes. All right. Cool. Okay. Um, hey, Jackie. So, what's the downside? There's no downside. There's downside is just together with the volatility the of S and P five hundred, yeah. right? So okay. it doesn't matter whether you buy S&P 500, MSCI World Index. These are all ways to have exposure 
to broad markets who have generated markets that have returned 7 to 10% over the long term. And the most important thing for a passive index fund is cost. For active funds, you need to find the best fund manager because there are good fund managers and bad fund managers. Some under, most of them underperform. Some of them outperform. I don't believe in active yeah. fund managers. He doesn't believe in active fund managers, but believe. there are good fund managers yeah, I know. out there. There's some uh, good hedge funds, uh, but most of them underperform. Last yeah. year, I think 90% underperformed <laughs> in the global funds. But if you buy index fund, you don't have to worry about which fund manager. It doesn't matter whether it's Line Global or Mundi or BlackRock. You need to get the lowest cost because okay. it's replicating almost the exact same index. I see. Okay. So now we have three options. Lion Global, which I think 100% of my shares, out of my money and dollars is inside. Okay. And then uh, we have got a Mundi. Which you now we, need to shift over to. Yeah. And yeah. then now I've got iShares as well, right? For your cash and SRS. Cash and SRS. Okay. So among all these three, uh, Looks like the one that's most costly is Line Global, which now now we're left with two options, uh, Amandi or SRS. Uh, clearly, Amandi is for uh, is for CPF, and for non CPF, we can consider iShares. I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There was one question on the fees, and I said uh, I think that look, I mean, Endowers charges the lowest fees in the industry. Even uh, even Fund Supama charges more fees than us. They also take trailer fees that you don't know about, but it's the commissions that fund managers pay the, the dollar decks and fund supermarket and uh, poems and those platforms that talk about zero sales charge, but Endowers has never charged sales charges. The commissions that you pay, they're called trailer fees and retrocession fees that are hidden, taken from your fund and then paid to the distributor like the, you know, fund supermarket dollar decks or DBS or you know, other banks and brokers. We receive that and we give 100% cash back to our clients. So we've returned in cash more than $6 million already. We've only been around for three plus years since we launched CPF, and we have returned more money than the revenue we generate in one year. So we're giving back more to our customers than what we're keeping. I think that's the most important thing. We have had a very high level of integrity. Um, you know, us, uh, we are the leading the charge in independent, you know, fee only conflict-free investing um, and so we want to tell you that our fees are very very low and it's you know barely enough for us to survive with these clothes <laughs> and, 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 and basically I, I've been trying to sell this kind of thing to him he cannot I buy can't it cannot afford, afford it. it I can't afford this yeah. <laughs> okay okay I need you to have short answers because there are yes. like gazillion yes. questions, questions thousands of yeah. questions right now okay I'll just go straight to those questions okay number one question is that uh uh, how do we switch from uh, Mundi to to uh, to sorry? How do we switch from Line Global or whatever funds we have into a Mundi? Is it a so phone call? You can do it. App, no, no, you can do it on the app. Okay. Everybody on the app should be able to sell and buy. You can do a transfer goal. So you create a new goal with the uh, Mundi um, or the Black Rock if it's for cash and SRS, and just switch it over. Um, we will sell it, and then you know you'll settle, and then you will buy it. So it will automatically be done for you. How, how long does it take the tran tra transfer? So normally these transactions take T plus one or T plus two. So mostly T plus one, and and therefore that it will settle about. Modify goal. Huh? The term is modify goal. Modify goal. Yeah. Exactly. Sorry, not transfer goal. Mod modify goal. No, no. How, how, yeah. Okay, okay. Like, you know, you need to understand. Uncle, auntie like us huh, cannot understand how, how, how to do it. Right? Is there a video we can look at or something like that? Yeah, know? so go to the website. We've given you details of you know how to do that in Modify Goal. In the webinar that we did when we launched the funds, we're going to do another one this, this next week. So the BlackRock CEO and the BlackRock head of, you know, used to be the head of iShares, uh, managing director will be joining me on a call on BlackRock. And then a Monday one we did last uh, two weeks ago, um, it's on in the Endowers YouTube channel, so you can go and look. But you can reach out to support at endowers.com. We'll talk you through support it. Support at endowers.com. Everybody, yeah? Endowers, support at endowers.com. Um, monthly lump sum, regular savings plan, all available. Jackie, your question. Um, withholding tax um, is... Amundi, there's no way of avoiding withholding tax. Only the BlackRock avoids withholding tax. Uh, and then the estate tax issue is not a problem because these are funds that we brought into Singapore and locally registered, MAS registered. So it's a local Singapore fund denominated in Sing dollars. So you don't have to do FX additional cost 
what, you know, if you do USIS or US, you always charge these very high FX spread. Or oh, the other thing you don't know, uh, Lou, we launched the FX. Now you wait, can wait, have wait. FX here. Uh, let, let, oh, let, so, so, one at a time. Yeah, lowest at cost, time. Lowest oh, cost FX in Singapore on in Dallas. Okay, okay, wait, wait. Wait, yeah. I, I'm now uh, in my app. Okay, I'm going, I'm going to show you all how to do it because I also don't know how to do it. Okay. So, where? No, 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 no. worries. Um, Shang-Chi, yeah. this is Shang-Chi. Everybody, uh, he's in the, he's a telegram. 65, everybody knows. Yep. Okay, so, so you click onto the goal. Wait, no, wait, no, wait, show, show uh, him uh, the goal uh, first. Uh, yeah. me cannot okay, see. Okay, when you log in, this is the main screen. So, no, this that's is not the main were. screen. This is where we were. Wait, yeah, this is the main you screen. Scroll up. Okay. To show the actual goal. You go to the goal. You click, click on the goal. You click the, f the, f the fun. Oh, yeah, the, yeah, okay. yeah, the goal or the fun, right? You click onto the top. The right three button. Corner, the, yep, the three button. Okay. And then there's basically the modify goal. Modify goal, okay. Yep, right. So so under the fun selection, yep. you would have to choose the Amundi okay. Prime. Okay. Um, so yes. you, add, you add the, put in the plus button. Yep. Then go next. Yes. Right. Um, and then you know go to the fund allocation. Yeah. So you will change a Mundi to one hundred percent. Hey, I don't go one hundred percent so fast. No, no, no. <laughs> then zero percent. Okay. Right. Uh, so basically, what we will do is that we'll sell off your line global, and then we'll buy the Mundi Prime well, Fund. How much you want to do? Okay. Let's do. Let's do uh, fifty percent. Fifty percent. Okay. Okay. So. So fifty percent, which means that we will sell off fifty percent of the line global fund, and then we will buy, take the proceeds and buy the Amundi fund. Okay, and then done. Okay, then next. Press next. Then next. Okay. I think you have to leave. Right. Yeah, that's it. And, and then concrete confirm. Yes. Then you you read through the details of the new portfolio that you you have created, and okay. then you click confirm. Wait, it, does it cost me money to do this change? No. Not at all. Okay. No cost involved, okay, no fees, accept. no penalties, no charges. That's it. Uh, no, there's some. SMP. Uh, no, no, OTP. there's a OTP, OTP, right? So anything before OTP, you are safe. Don't don't be worried about making any okay. mistakes. Okay, OTP right? done. Wait, wait, wait. OTP done. Go modification in progress. Ah. Done. <laughs> How many of you think you can do it by yourself? Okay, okay. In in all yeah. fairness. I think that ninety percent of people say it's actually quite easy. So it's just, we just me. showed how easy. So it it's is. just me, you know, <laughs> Uncle Lou here, dumb and uh, I bet not you if B would to do it, she would tremble. So I right, think B? B would do it much better than you. Yeah. <laughs> B would learn it much faster. Lou always talks about this, but it's so easy. Show us you change to China fund uh, later. Uh, I don't change China. I only one Monday. I don't have any other thing. Okay. Uh, okay. And then the SRS you need to change to BlackRock. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Lu, do you into iShare? The one iShare, I even look at it. Amandi, I kind of I tell you, I tell you, you change your SRS. Okay, lah. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Zero withholding tax. Wait, I, I do it myself. I do it myself. Right. The reason is because I work so hard. We, the whole team at Endows, work so hard for many, many, no, many no, months no, no. to <laughs> make this happen. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, uh, no, 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 this one. Okay, okay. Click the goal. So, uh, so, uh, so uh, I got SRS inside. So, uh, I show you. Uh, okay. Click. I try myself. Uh, SRS, I click. And then top button. Wait, 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 wait. What is it? Okay. See, uh, invest in this goal. Is it? No, no, no. Top, top. Remember what is the what top, top one? Oh, I the top. See. Shang -Shi, the are you watching? Three. Yeah, that one. Modify, Modify goal. Yeah. Okay. And then, then one yeah, fun, is it? Yeah. One fun. Wap Yang. I got a lot of black rock. Yeah. Black rock. This time to look shares. Shares. Yeah. Shares. Yeah, the top US index. I right. shares US index fund, nah. Sorry, yeah. yeah. Okay. It, yeah. I don't. Yeah. Okay. A oh, plus, plus. A oh, plus. Yeah. How oh, I know when to press? Okay. Done. Then next step. Next two funds. Huh? That's right, that's oh, right. that's correct. That's correct. Why? Is yeah, yeah, because you have the existing one. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Two, yeah. Here. And then. Then. Fund uh, allocation. Bottom one. Fund allocation. Yeah. Then I put fifty. No, no. This one's black eye line zero. What? Line Bian. zero. And then this one, you just close here. No, no. I want yeah. fifty percent in right now. Yeah, that's good. No fees, right? No fees. Okay. Try first so I can put fifty fifty. Sure, sure. Okay. Yep. Then click next. Right. Next. Then I click next. That's it. OTP. Next, oh, you choose confirm. the details. What is this? Accept and confirm. We are OTP, you all cannot see. Yeah. 
Okay, OTP done. Okay, OTP will okay. OTP done ah. Go go modification progress. It's quite tough ah. No okay. tough. It's damn tough. tough. Ah. tough. It's damn tough ah. It's easier it's than anything anybody else can do. No one else can do this. It's quite thing. tough ah. It's quite tough ah. Yeah, it's quite tough for me. It's quite tough. Okay. Uh, okay, you but but to. okay. Wait, uncle me a little bit old generation ah. So okay, now I done. I see people done it. I've done it myself, and now I know. Okay, so for those people who are like me, got technophobia, okay, watch this video again. And if still cannot, what what support at support at endowers.com. Support at endowers.com. Okay, because for those, we are here to support you. <laughs> yeah, there are pretty girls and handsome men here. They will help you. Okay. Yes, I have changed from Line Global Fund at Monday for my SRS. Why need to change it to BlackRock iShare? He just explained. BlackRock I'm iShare for CPF, BlackRock for cash SRS because thirty percent withholding tax goes to zero. You save zero point six percent, zero point five, zero point six percent on your return every year. Okay, so yeah, dimension that, question. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Another question was <laughs> dimension dimensional fund, dimensional. dimensional fund versus all the other fund you're selling. Yeah. I also got dimensional, no? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Also, dimensional. Why? Why? Why not dimensional? Dimensional is great. Dimensional okay. is great. Especially you have dimensional. I have dimensional, and uh, the reason is because dimensional is a very, very intelligent people. Very atas, <laughs> more than me, and they basically are going through history and looking at what drives markets and what are the characteristics of companies that generate better returns over time, and those are value which is valuation. And the second thing is size of the company. So small companies over long term does better, obviously, because, you know, you catch them early. And then the third one is profitability. So more profitable companies do better. It's all very logical things. And so they make a portfolio that is passive. So it's very passive and indexed, but they tilt it. So they have the they own like 10,000 companies so very diversified, but it gives you exposure to the factors of proven returns over long time time periods, such as value and small and profitability. And so there are periods in the cycle where growth does well. Like the last decade, technology did very well. S&P 500 did well. But last two years, value actually started outperforming. And which, so, is which is dimensional. And okay. I, I think that they will have a, a decade of outperformance most likely uh, because it goes through like decade cycles. Remember, I've shared this before and I've told Lou this as well, but after the global technology like bubble burst in 1999, the tech bubble burst, from 2000 to for the next decade, for 10 years, the S&P 500 underperformed everything. So there is periods where S&P 500 can underperform. Any index can underperform. If you own only a small piece, it's not a small piece. U.S. is the biggest piece, and and U.S. S and P five hundred, you know, invest has companies that are you know exposure to globally, but it's still a U.S. exposure. So when Europe outperforms, emerging market outperforms, you know, Japan outperforms, U.S. cannot outperform. It can only do underperform. I so see. basically, there is a period, especially it's very similar because technology outperformed in the nineties and then blew up. Technology outperformed in the last decade and it's kind of, you know, blew up last year. It's kind of very similar stage. But S&P 500 is very different from back then where a lot of technology and only technology at really extreme valuations existed. This time, S&P 500 is a little bit more diversified, but it doesn't have Europe. It doesn't have emerging markets. And right now, after a decade of underperformance in emerging markets, decade of underperformance of value, there is a probability that these things come back. And that's why we say diversify yourself. There's a lot of questions about the Endow's flagship, um, you know, having MSCI Acqui instead, and then Dimensional. All of these options are given to you so that you can have exposure that is very diversified, very global, and we try to give it, give it to you at the lowest cost possible, much, much lower than anybody else. I see. And then give you advice like this along the way so that you can understand why we're doing it, and you know why you need to keep investing and what are the better options out there so so um, there's a question on estate duties only recently i found that if i die if i own uh, US. individual us stocks you know one third of it will go to us government yeah 
not only U.S. stocks, but U.S. ETFs as well. Yeah. So because U.S. ETFs means that it's a fund that is listed on the stock exchange. So it's treated like a stock. So yeah. question right now is, uh, does all your funds have, uh, have will, will, we, will we hit with estate duties? Yeah, so that's one of the reasons why a lot of people ask us, why don't you do ETF, U.S. ETF, like, you know, Stash Away Scythe, all these guys use U.S. ETFs. You know, a lot of robos or banks, they sell U.S. ETFs. You know, like a lot of broker, Mumu, Tiger, IBKR, all ETFs. Everyone's using ETFs and we say no, because ETFs are costly. In this, in, you know, if you're investing from Singapore and dangerous because one, it has withholding tax. Two, you have FX cost. Every time you buy, you have to exchange the U.S. dollars. And then when you convert back, the banks and brokers take a huge spread. But don't you also have exchange cost? Zero exchange cost. What do you mean? How do you achieve that? So there's two ways. One, on the platform, we take zero spread on any FX conversion. So I told you on the app now, we are the cheapest way to you know transfer FX from US dollar to Sing dollars or Swiss or Euro. We have uh, six major currencies that we have, uh, an FX function. Uh, we take the wholesale rate, three pips. Three pips is 0 0.0001. 0 0.0001 percent three pips instead of the what, what 0 0.003 percent that many people will charge i so see nothing basically almost free and because we're not doing effects for the sake of effects we don't take any spread we don't take anything so you don't make money out we don't make any exchange. money from exchange ah yeah. and every, other company does that every company does that banks do that brokers do that you know um even you know the robo advisors do that how can they do that yeah, but it's just the norm, and it's that's the, norm? the difference between in Davos and everybody else. Is we try to think about how can we do things differently. I how see. can we help the individual do better? And FX is one function where we felt we need to provide a function where FX can be. So you can buy a US dollar fund, or a Swiss Swiss franc fund, or a Euro dollar fund, or Aussie dollar fund, or GBP fund on the Davos platform. Now we have multi currency capabilities at the lowest cost of FX. And that's really important, like again, lowering costs. So going back to the US ETFs is withholding tax, there's you know FX cost, but a lot of people don't know, as you mentioned, estate tax. The estate tax is effectively inheritance tax. And because Singapore no one can doesn't die, you know? and because Singapore doesn't have inheritance estate tax, people don't think about it. Yeah. But overseas, every country has estate tax, right? Yeah. So you have to think about the risk that who knows, right? You and I, we don't know. So um, we have to be aware that that is a risk and if you, you know, God forbid something happens to you, you have exposure in the US market, they will hold it. Your family and your loved ones will not have access to it. I see. And then they will charge a fee. Uh, a <laughs> it's dying, it's dying twice, man. Yeah. First you die, then <laughs> the amount of money that the US government takes away, you die again. And yeah. then, you know, your loved ones can't access that money for a long time. I it's, see. It's going to be difficult. So okay. there's a lot of issues that we need to solve. And so Indawas launched with Singapore domiciled, Singapore located, Singapore funds. So even though it's investing into global markets, they're all Singapore funds, right? So that's really important because there's no estate tax if you buy a Singapore fund that is registered locally. Mm -hmm. uh, is approved by the MAS and it's on the endowed platform. Now, so, we have other funds, but most of the funds that we use, especially for CPF, especially for the things that we mentioned, all Singapore domicile funds. So just no be very estate. clear. Just now, no buying tax. global, no estate tax. No. Amundi, I shares, no estate tax. Amundi, no estate tax. No estate tax. Well, that's very important, you know? It's very important. That's very, very important. Yeah, that's very, very important. Okay, yes. Someone asked a very interesting question. It looks like Endowers doesn't make money at all. <laughs> so how do you survive? Uh, That's so not true. Uh. You do make money. Then you make money, but it's very point small. Three, the point three percent, right? And our revenues are very small. But this is why it's a venture investment, right? That's a lot of how this Endowers yeah, make yeah. money. We, we, so what we're doing is changing the industry for the better. So a lot of the fees you pay to your insurance broker, your financial advisor, through insurance linked products or you know your uh, unit trust linked products, um, all the fees you pay to you know Fund Supermart, Dollardex, Poems, you know DBS, the banks and the brokers and everybody, all the fees you pay, a lot of it you do not know you're paying. It's not transparent. Okay. Because normally, if I buy, let's say the most popular fixed income product in Singapore is fixed Pimco Income Fund. Pimco Income Fund is a great product, great fund. 
huge returns generating over consistently over time. And Pincoin banks sell a lot of this um, you know, fund everywhere. But most people buy the retail share class of the fund, which is 1.45%. Now, in Davos, went to Pinko and said, why do we need to pay 1.45%? And they say, well, 1.45% is what we charge the client. And then we take 0.7 or 0.8% of that and give to you for selling it to the client with these fees that are hidden. And we say, well, that's not fair. We, don't, we want to be transparent and we want to show exactly what clients are pay, paying. So we get that 0.7, 0.8% and we give 100% back to our client. And for, instead of doing that, we charge our client transparently a fee that you can see. So instead of getting 70 basis points, we're actually charging you 30 basis points for buying the same fund. But not only that, because we're doing that, we can access the PINCO fund at the institutional rate. So institutional rates that, you know, for rich people in private banks or for GIC type institutional investors, you get to access it at lower cost. So we get it at 0.55% instead of the 1.45%. So if you go to a normal bank, you would pay 1% upfront sales charge, 1.45% for the fund, that's 2.45%. And in Davos, it's 0.55% because we access the institutional fund, and then we only charge 0.3, so it's 0.85. Okay. So that is half the cost of the actual underlying fund, and one third the cost if you went to a normal bank. Okay, just to be clarified, answering your question, uh, this question came out a lot. So, but Amandi and iShares, uh, although they are registered in Singapore, they are domiciled either in, not in US, but in some other countries. Will we yeah. be hit with estate duties or not? No, no. It's, it's Luxembourg domiciled. So, yeah. when, they, when you say it's domiciled, it's where the fund is registered, yeah. the underlying fund, right? Yeah. And they try to find the locations where the fund manager is is located or where the fund manager has a low cost like scalable business which is Luxembourg or Ireland or wherever because costs are cheaper there than London or cheaper than Singapore. Now when we bring that fund into Singapore we have to register it with MAS right US ETFs are not registered here in Singapore they're not in Singapore dollars. The Mundi funds are locally registered in Singapore dollar in Singapore and it's in Sing SGD Sing dollars. So you don't have to change FX. There's no estate tax risk at all. So I, I categorized correctly again and again, I repeat this, but no estate tax on the funds that you buy on Indawas, which is how we designed it from the beginning when we first began the business so that we can build it uh, for Singaporean investors for, in Sing dollars for CPF and SRS and cash. Okay, so can we, can we uh, a lot of people asking this now, uh, yes, the, this is the Amundi one, yes, right? Yes. Okay. So maybe you so can this just. This is Amundi Prime I, US. I think you're going to show it this, oh, way. this way. Okay. Ken? I think this is reverse. I, I, I don't know. Okay. This one is definitely this way. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Ken, huh? Done. Okay. And if you have any questions, again, support at endowers.com. We are here to support you. Help. You know, we have uh, dedicated client advisors uh, licensed by the MAS. So we're not completely digital. Uh, if you want to ask, you can do email, you can phone, WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, you know, email support at indows.com or phone calls, or you can schedule an advisory service, um, 15 minute calls, or you know, you can go to uh, the weekly call that we do uh, where our Indows advisors help you along the way. The main concern of iShare US funds is a synthetic replication. Any comment on that? I think yeah, he answered that question already. No, right? It's pretty safe. Yeah, okay. It's very can safe. you post the fund on your Telegram channel later? Yes, we will. Uh, can you just do can it right she, now? Can, yeah. it now? Uh, can you share which fund did you buy in the Dowers? Uh, I always been buying the Line Global 500, but now, as you can see, I flipped oh, 50%. Geez, I already flipped 50% of it. Uh, okay. I already flipped 50% of uh, both funds to... Uh, iShares and Amandi already. Okay, cool. Uh, so I'm not, hey, hello, this is me, okay. Lou, the customer. Huh? I'm the investor, I'm buying. I'm not saying you must do it. Huh? You all go and think yourself, I'm doing it myself. Okay, don't later you all go complain MAS, then I get a, a phone call from MAS. It wasn't Lou, it was me. Yeah. And I'm a licensed MAS so financial he can sell. advisor and I can, I'm not selling, I'm advising. Yeah, advising. I'm advising right, that whatever. if it's the same index, then choose the lowest cost. It's better for you. 
and then you know sold for FX lower cost sing dollars is locally registered so no estate tax uh, iShares in particular even better because zero withholding tax so it is the best product to sell so what about market so what about those market. people who have your flagship portfolio fund yeah so flagship portfolio can uh, you sorry can you? there was a bit of a delay but we will be doing it automatically for you so look forward to that any new investors putting creating new goals will go into the new funds so and then within a week or two hopefully we'll have good news uh, we need to change the technology a little bit and then everybody will be given a recommended portfolio change and this is really important a lot of like these robos or other managers they just change it without asking you and just you know change allocation like some people sell at the bottom and like you know buy stuff that you don't want we always give clients the choice so it's an advisory model not a discretionary model and so, we give you a recommended portfolio change and we tell you why we are changing you know from a line global to an amundi or to iShares and then you need to make that choice and say yes i accept and then they will switch it over um so how come there's a five percent cash for iShares though am i not choosing the right one i no, no, no. you see underlying sorry sorry on the underlying holding of the fund changes uh all the time so it captures at the end of the month, each month, what the allocation, and then we get that data, we upload it, so we just give you transparently what the underlying holding is. But as I said, what they do, uh, BlackRock does several things. Um, so one is replication through synthetic, um, and then they also sometimes lend, um, you know, get interest rates on the cash as well. Uh, so they've so actually she, historically, historically you the QR outperformed, the Telegram outperformed the S&P 500. So iShares has outperformed the S&P 500 over the long period. There's no transferring fee. There's no cost involved in using the Endow's platform. Just the fund level fee that Amundi or I BlackRock iShares will charge, or um, the you know the Endow's fee, which is transparently shown and the lowest cost in the market. Okay, there's a very important yeah. question that I want. Uh, I will. Everybody's asking. Okay, number one is. We invested in uh, the Line Global Fund, you know, when the S&P Fund was 3,900 points or something like that. How come up to now, I don't still see a profit? Huh? Yeah. Line Global? Yeah. If okay. it, look, if the Line Global Index is up, then you would be up. No, no, no. Yeah. The S&P 500 was 300 points, yeah. 3,900 points when they invested. Yeah. But now, no, the S&P 500 has it gone up. Where does it say that? No, the, 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 yeah. I also experienced that. Yeah, yeah. Now it's 4,100 points. How come, well, the, no, how come we don't make money? And I know the answer. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, okay. it's the currency yes. effect, right? Because... Yes. Uh, if it's in US dollar return, then it would be exactly the same, right? But we show you the Singapore dollar exposure uh, that you have. So as a Singaporean, you need to be diversified for this reason, right? Because the dollar currency movement is actually going to affect the return as well. So it's a market return and then converted into Sing dollars is your actual return. The Telegram is in the uh, one six five Telegram group, okay? Uh, Sing but again, this is this goes to you know we were going to talk about markets and you know macro as well. Yeah, but, I'm coming there. Yes. Yeah, but uh, this is important because I think that the you know the Singapore dollar has historically always appreciated against the U.S. dollar over time, and so if the Sing dollar appreciates, you know it is going to impact the All returns. Right. As okay, well. there are quite there are quite a few individual customer already actively doing it. Got questions? Can you please? I'm not gonna customer service you guys here can you please go to support at endowers.com okay now the other macro question is you know now china russia brazil all ganging up uh, and they're gonna say we're gonna move our us dollar oh, commonwealth Just okay move to commonwealth oh commonwealth really? okay yes, we'll, we'll go there we we'll go there yeah. so there's a lot of people say that wow the us dollar now is gonna collapse you know, China is going to replace as the world leading currency or Euro is going to stick up. Everybody's moving away. You know, we already get hit, you know, when the US dollar was 1.45 or something like that. Now it's 1.33. You know, the rise in the the rise in S&P 500, we didn't really make a profit out of it. Okay. So if this were to happen, it's going worse, right? What's your view on the macros, macroeconomics of the US dollar? Yeah. Um, US dollar is affected mostly by two things. One is... The rate differential and when i say rate differential it means the interest rate that the us is giving for its money 
versus Singapore dollar interest rates. And so, or, you know, Chinese renminbi interest rates or UK, you know, GBP. So the rate differentials is going to make a big difference because if you think about it, you would do the same, right? If you had some cash and US is giving you 5% yield um, and there's no FX risk in owning USD, then you would move some money into USD to get the higher interest rate. And so when US started raising interest rates from zero at the end of 2020, 21, um, and raised it very rapidly throughout 2022, what happened was a lot of money got sucked into the US because that's the higher interest rate. Um, and, and a lot of money left the emerging markets and Asia and other markets. And so as a result, the US dollar always strengthens when interest rates are higher there or you know, the economy is doing well or there's a lot of earnings and a lot of attractive you know, investment opportunities, then money gets sucked into the US. The other extreme is when things are really bad. So Ukraine war breaks out or you know, the banks go you know, under or you know, COVID hits then uh, what happens you will see all the time is that the US dollar spikes up because a lot of people have this flight to safety uh, instinct. So what is the safest asset is US Treasury bills, US government bonds. And so people move money back into the US whenever there is a crisis. And we call that the dollar smile. Uh, my ex-colleague at dollar Stanley, smile. Okay. Uh, told, made this name up. But the dollar smile means extremes of very, very bad situations like crisis, then everybody runs to the dollar. Or things are really good, uh, economy is booming, you know, earnings are very great, then everybody puts money into the US market, or US real estate is great, or you know, the interest rates are very high, and so US dollar looks attractive, then you go into USD. But all other situations, normally the US dollar is you know, mediocre or weakening versus especially currencies like Sing dollar. So Sing dollar is entering a phase where it's most likely going to appreciate against the US dollar, because the Fed interest rate hike is almost peaking mm -hmm. and maybe end of this year, next year for sure, interest rates will start coming down. So, so what the do rate differential will go down. I don't think we'll move a lot. So I don't think this is going to make, you know, an FX trade is going to make a huge amount of money for us because currencies move much less than stocks and other things. So compared to what the equity market or fixed income market does, the FX is not going to move as much. So I think one of the best ways to do it is to actually expose yourself more to fixed income. I think this is a cycle where you want to own some fixed income because interest rates are so high. We didn't have to touch fixed income for so long because it was zero yield and interest rates were coming down and we made some money, but you know, that's ended now. So with interest rates where they are, on the way up, obviously you lose money in fixed income. So you wanted to avoid that. But now at this point, yields are very high. And if interest rates start coming down, then you actually have both the benefit of high yield and also capital gains from fixed income. So, and, and, and what, which, uh, so, so there are two questions. Yep. My earlier question was, do you see a scenario where US dollar will collapse? No. So this whole de-dollarization uh, trend is something that's been talked about for decades. You know, we talked about the demise of the US and the US dollar for a long time. Um, obviously, I think it was way, way too early. Now the, the conversations are serious and you know, the BRICS countries, the Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, these countries have become much bigger and China has become much bigger. So it is important, but we've had other phases where Europe became very big, Japan became very big, even Korea and the Tigers, everybody said was gonna take over. But the U.S. has stood still, still because of various reasons. But most important thing is it's still the most used currency for trade. It is where all the financial markets are traded mostly, uh, and it represents the biggest portion of the stock market globally. So the U.S. dollar financial market or trade, I think, would, could change. You know, trade, you know, trading in renminbi or trading in you know other currencies could increase. But the financial market is so dominantly U.S. dollar. That I don't think will change. Okay. Uh, so it's too early to talk about the dollarization. Okay. Still, still. So, so that's a very good one. Um, you talk about fixed income bonds, mm. basically. Uh, what products do you have uh, in bonds? Uh, we have a lot of selections. So it's what, mostly, what's the good, Just give me yeah. two. Don't give me one. Don't okay. give me Pimco, Pimco Income Fund is the most popular fund in Singapore and across Asia. And the reason is because it actually has generated very good returns over time. And then a global, uh, diverse, globally diversified um, you know, fixed income product. So we have just launched the Amundi 
uh, Global Ag and also the BlackRock iShares uh, Global Ag for low cost passive uh, fixed income that gives you some exposure. But What's the returns of it? Well, it depends no, on the cycle. Don't, don't talk right? about don't talk about um, uh, appreciation uh, or so. But just the fixed, fixed income means you have got so the some yield, the yield, right? The yield is for the passive index funds will be lower, like a four or five percent. That's not. That's lower. And that's not low. And the fixed income fund is seven percent. You kidding? No, but and there think, are there are other products that are going to give you even better yield. And you know this is not for everybody, but if you're an accredited investor, then like Lou, then if you're an accredited investor, you get access to some private credit. Uh, or alternative like credit fixed income products which can generate even higher yield up to 10% yield um, as well because they fixed invest income fixed income private credit in, so in English? in English it means that you're not buying a bond issued by a huge like company junk bonds invest no not junk bonds investing into projects or deals what's the risk well the risk is that the project blows up but the projects they invest in is actually it's like any other company has credit risk, uh, so but private credit is gives you uh, better returns because of the liquidity, not because of the higher risk. Okay, so take those those uh, accredited investor one side, which a lot of people cannot invest. So Pinco Pinco bond fund. Yeah. Okay. You're saying that, but I, what I would like to say, Lou, is that yes. you know not every fund is for everyone. So what's important, as we always say, and we want to be a trusted advisor. We don't want to just sell a product. Or sell a fund to you. We want to be a trusted advisor who comes alongside you in this journey. And this journey is not just this month I'm selling you a fund. This is for decades. Your CPF investing, your personal savings for retirement adequacy, for your children's college fund, you know, your education, your health, medical savings, all of the house, uh, all, of the, all of these are investment goals that we have. So as individuals, we have financial goals. We have to invest in the right way, taking the right amount of risk for the right goals that we invest in. So everybody is different. You know, everybody has different amounts of money. Everybody has different risk appetite. Everybody has different needs and we're investing for different goals. So what is important is investing in the right way for the right goal. So fixed income is suitable for a certain goal that you have. For retirement and you're investing for 50 years, you can invest 100% equity and just close your eyes and keep going like Lou always says because that's the right way to do it. So the best way to do it is maybe have a conversation with our advisors, our client advisors are here to help you um, and you know, look at all of the research that we have, a lot of great um, written and webinars that we have on Endowers Insights um, and you'll learn a lot about how to invest in the right way because you're not gonna learn this overnight. Like many, many webinars from Lou is helping you and then more webinars from Indawas and then read some books, read some articles and try to learn yourself because this is the most important thing in your life. You read and learn about many other things, but this is what's actually going to impact your life and your future and so, the future of your loved ones. So you have to spend the time and effort to improve your financial literacy and improve your investment. Okay, so is it that PIMCO GIS fund, yep. local bond fund you're referring to? That's right. That's the one, okay? Yep. That's the one, okay? A difference between accumulation and distribution. Uh, what's that? So it's, it's asking... Yeah, question. what's that? Well, so... Uh, what's not... the difference between accumulation versus distribution? Yeah, so accumulation and distribution is very, very important for us. We have, from the beginning, told... Our oh, investors, I think yes. that's exactly... That's the... what it is, yeah. And then so, we can also talk about that method. Yes, precisely. Okay, okay. We'll talk about it. Because yeah. from the beginning, and Dallas has always said that investing in accumulation over distribution is better because it's I, more I, efficient. I comb my hair now. Okay. <laughs> I got hair to comb now. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, um, so a lot of funds uh, receive dividends or interest income and they have payouts. A lot of them will just say that, hey, keep it in the fund, reinvest it, so that any dividends or income we get, we reinvest into the fund and therefore we keep building wealth and it accumulates and compounds. That is the efficient way to do it. That's accumulation. But a lot of people, especially in Singapore, want cash. They want payout. And so uh, what fund managers have created is these distribution share classes, which is the exact same fund. But if, rather than reinvesting very efficiently, they tell you, oh, you, you get can to pick get cash. Up. So in a way, this was a kind of a gimmick 
that banks use to get people to say, hey, this fund is great, you get cash. Yeah. But it's actually very inefficient because you're taking the cash out from the fund. A lot of these funds tell you that they give you dividends and interest, but they're actually taking money from the capital. So although distributing is 4%, return is 2 how do they get the remaining they two? They sell your, your capital money. down. Yeah, your money it's is BS. used to pay you back. Okay. So it's BS, yeah. It's so BS. so just to make it very clear, there are two types of a way, two types of uh, dis- uh, two types funds. of uh, funds. Okay, one is the dividends they reinvest it automatically. Automatically, that's the best, and everybody should do that. Okay, that's how you get the full power of compounding. Okay, then there's the uh, one that give you out the dividends in cash okay you have dividends. so you collect money and Singaporeans love dividends uh. love dividends right but you know what okay a lot of them steal your money and steal, take out money from your capital and then give it to you right so I this is now a nice dovetail into this a bit of saga involved a small group of customers that came out in the social media this is exactly the problem Distribution versus accumulation that caused this problem, okay? Maybe Sam, you can describe a little bit on that. Yeah, so uh, what happened was that there was a delay in the payment of dividends for this one fund in particular. I think it may have affected a few more funds, uh, but it's a delay. So it was a few days longer, um, and this one particular fund was delayed quite a few days, uh, quite a long long period actually. Um, so. The, the problem exists and so first thing we need to do as a trusted advisor is to apologize and seek your understanding and uh, tell you that this was a mistake. Now there is a reason why... It's not why your fault lah. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's not Endowers fault lah. So the first thing is that the most important thing, Endowers never touches your money. So when we began Endowers, we made absolutely sure that we had this you know, breakup where the money that our clients invest in, into the funds, the cash that you put into, is never put into Endowas. So we never touch your money, we never have access to it, we cannot pull money from you. I think there was a robo uh, which had like this pulling money function and they kept pulling, pulling, pulling until there was no money left in the uh, client's bank account. You know, those kind of things can never happen in Endowas, okay? So we can never touch your money. We created this partnership with you, UOB Khan, so that you can actually safely store your cash, safely store your investments. And even if, God forbid, Endowers is not going to disappear, we're growing very well and doing well, but if we disappear, you can still have UOB Khan, which is owned by UOB Bankers. Okay, so UOB Khan custodizes, we call the word custody. We are custodizing like a baby, like your assets, okay? And then what happens when you have a dividend payout is the fund that you buy will distribute the dividend. So they collect from all the companies or you know the coupons or interest payment or dividends and then they will collect it and then every month or every quarter they will pay it out. So the fund manager goes through what's called a transfer agent which is normally a bank like you know Northern Trust or City or State Street and they will transfer the money to the custodian in this case UOB Khan. And the UBK Yen will get a notification from them telling them that this is the dividend they received. And the unit trust division will send a memo telling the finance department, this is the amount that you pay to all these clients. And at the same time, they tell us, exact same time they tell finance, we tell us. And then we tell our clients, this is the payment that of dividend that has gone out. Now, that process got broken. And in that one fund or whatever. In that one fund, the it affected very, very small number of our clients and they've all been paid. All the delays have been sorted out. So it was a few more days and then it's all been sorted out. Uh, and this is the problem with dividends that it does take a long operational process to pay out these dividends. If you're in accumulation share class, no effect. If you're in CPF, if your fund is in CPF, no effect. No, Nobody was affected in CPF. So. Uh, basically, uh, the, 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 the bottom line is that endowers never touches your money, your money is safe, there was a delay, there's no, like endowers is not keeping your dividends, um, and we want to be transparent and tell you exactly what's going on, so that you know what's going on, but you know, you should be investing in accumulation share classes and not in distribution share classes in the first place, because accumulation share classes automatically reinvest at the fund manager level. 
So it doesn't have to go through the transfer agent, the custodian, in Dallas yeah, or anybody. Exactly. Just yeah. reinvest into the fund automatically and you keep compounding your returns. And if you need money or if you want distribution, sell the shares. Sell the shares, sell the yeah. units, and then set, take it out. In Dallas, will efficiently take the money out every month if you want. We have clients who have monthly distribution set up for the exact amount they want. Dividends don't give you exact amounts. They give you $56.28. Next month is 47. No one knows how much they pay out. So, you know, you want to have regular income, then invest compound with accumulation share classes over the long term, and then have a redemption where you take out exactly $500 every single month without any exception. And Indawas has set it up so that you can do that. So let me say from a, uh, from, uh, from my perspective is this, okay? If you want dividends, okay, then don't go and invest in S&P 500 or this kind of thing, right? Those things don't give you much dividends. Give you two percent, one percent. You go for go for income funds, income funds or something yeah. like that. You cannot have the best of both worlds. If you want dividends, okay, go for dividends fund. If you want you want capital appreciation, you go for S and P five hundred and and other MSCI World Index, you know, dimensional fund or whatever. They they increase in capital value. You cannot have both. No such thing in the world, never seen before. I mean, you can have accumulation fund with some miserable dividends, then might as well put it back. Yeah, okay. This Singaporean thinking, I want everybody to change. Yeah, even my dad have that thinking, right? Oh, when I invest in capital growth, I say, ah, oh, yeah, no dividends. And when I want dividends, it doesn't grow capital. Doesn't oh, happen to both world, oh, la. Oh. wake up, la. yeah, okay. So One quick plug. So Indawas has these income portfolios. So we designed these income portfolios and it includes the PINCO income, includes some of the other great dividend paying or interest uh, coupon paying funds. Um, so we have three. So PINCO, uh, Indawas income portfolios, go to the website or your app and you can see the choice um, of an income portfolio and it targets different yields. So the secure one, you invest in 100% fixed income, very secure fixed income products, uh, safer like government bonds, you generate four five percent, maybe about five percent these days. And then you have uh, Indawas income higher, higher income, which is investing in slightly riskier stuff like emerging market bonds, high yield bonds, uh, high yield dividend. We add a twenty percent equity dividend uh, paying uh, portfolio as well, so you can grow income a little bit but get paid much higher, like six seven percent. And then we have the growth. Um, you know, future income. So for younger generation, you want some income, some pocket money maybe, but you also want to grow your money. So we put 40% equities and 60% fixed income and give you uh, a 4% plus yield. So there's different income portfolios for different age, right? And different type of people. Different type of people and for different purpose. Younger people need to grow their wealth. Older people need to safeguard their wealth. So all of these things are produced at Indawa so that we can help individual investors uh, have a more choice, you know, get the advice that they deserve and produce portfolios that is at the lowest cost possible um, in here in Singapore. Let's talk about macros right now again. Yep. So right now, the world is, you know, I've never seen a situation where you've got so many black swans coming. Yep. It's rare than one, right? Now, like, a yep. flock of black swans are coming, right? Yep. So right now, you have Ukraine-Russian war where there's no, doesn't seem to be an end to this conflict, okay? And, uh, and now we have OPEC driving up oil prices. Yeah. You've got China reopening, but we don't really know what's happening in the economy. Uh, and then we've got possibility of a US uh, currency issue. Then there's also a US-China conflict and things like that, right? Mm. So in this kind of very unusual environment where, you know, where things are very unstable and things like that, what, what, what would you suggest? Yeah, I mean, well, I began working in 1994. Mm. So the next year is 30 years. Wow. You don't look... Um, so yeah. 30 years, I would say maybe. So, so, you look um, younger than me. Yeah. Huh? You look younger than me. <laughs> no. Okay. Um, so basically, we saw 1997, I, you know, the Asian financial crisis. Countries yeah. went bankrupt. 1999, yeah. tech bubble cool. bursting. Yep. 2008, financial crisis. Everything in between, European crisis, you know, COVID now and, you know, this cycle. And it's not different. There's always cycles. And there's always, you know, um, markets that do go down in the short term. But long term, the markets do what they do. Um, now, black swans 
um, not black swans anymore because there's too many black swans. Um, and so, you know, I think the macro flock, is of, black flock of black swans we've experienced. Yeah. Um, and to think that this is worse than 99 or worse than 2008 or worse than 1997. It's not really. Not, no, not no. really. Yeah. yeah not and really. I've written an article about this on the Indows, you know, where there was this massive guru called Barton Biggs, yeah. legend of Wall Street. Um, and he's the one that started more standing investment management in the 70s. And he visited our office in 2008 during the height of the financial crisis. And we thought, you know, Morgan Stanley was going bankrupt. We were all going to lose our jobs and, you know, we were never going to recover. This is the Great Depression, uh, like 1923. I told him, is this like the Great Depression? And he said, no, this feels more like 1974. And I was like, what? 1974? What happened, like, what happened in 1974? <laughs> um, but basically he said that was worse than 2008. And he called the bottom of the market and said, buy in 2009. And it was within two weeks of the market bottoming. So being bearish at the bottom is the worst thing you can possibly do. Right? And this is why regular investments, because being able to go into the market at the bottom is only possible if you're already invested. And you will only put that money in if you already have money in the market. And so having like staying invested through the cycle, downturn and upturn is what gives you the 7% or 10% return over long term. This is not worse than 1974. This is not worse than 2008. This is not worse than, you know, even COVID, let's assume, right? So this is a normal cycle. There's normal tightening cycle. This is a normal cycle. We have to take it within the context of the cycle. Very good, very calming, right? This statement, right? Like, it's just one of the cycle. It's not the end of the world, okay? I think that's good. Uh, there's a lot of questions uh, about, about technical things about... Uh, about about endowers <laughs> can you please don't ask a question here if it's like why my account it does not work or that kind of thing right? just email support at endowers.com okay support at endowers.com i don't know how people are like they're yeah, like, putting it up on the chat there, there are so people, people here are. support endowers.com if you don't know how to email support endowers.com you can also ask in a 165 chat group yes. okay because one endowers uh, colleague uh, is answering those questions here, okay? I, I try to pick up the more important and macro questions yeah. uh, uh, well, right first now. First of all, if you're not joined in the 1M65 chat room, please join the chat room because Telegram 1M65 is an amazing resource where a lot of people, like people like yourselves, are learning about how to invest from Lou and many other people who are in there. So you should join the chat room. And if you join the chat room and you put questions up there, then not only in Dallas, but a lot of people can mm -hmm. also help you because they've gone through this journey with just like you. So they will put the answers up there, help you along, you know, uh, uh, on that journey together. And in Daos, um, Cheng Xi and other people will be able to uh, also contribute to that community. But if you have any specific in Daos questions, then please just reach out to in Daos, please. So a question, Mr. Lu, do you think that, do you think that most black swans are priced in already? Mm -hmm. By virtue that it's black swan means it's unanticipated. If it's unanticipated, it can, couldn't have been, have been priced in, okay? So, no, those two ways to look at it. One yeah. is that the black swan, if it happened, is priced in. Yeah. Future black swans is a black swan we don't know what exactly. is a black swan. <laughs> so, I cannot tell, right? We only know that few events that are likely to happen. So, most of the case, I would say, I know, a large proportion of like, it is priced in. I talked but, about this at the Bloomberg TV oh, Thursday. Yeah. You know what? Um, uh, Singshi, can you... Can you pin the link of the Bloomberg TV uh, for 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 our fans? Uh, please, please go and join our our please go and try our uh, Telegram chat group. There's a hell of information there, and there's a group of community experts. They are far better than I do helping you to answer questions. They don't, they don't collect a single cent. They do it out of the heart. Okay, uh, just uh, I don't collect anything from Dowers, huh? Please, uh, uh, Okay, so so don't think that I'm getting money out of this thing. Okay. Uh, but I did say in there that a lot of the Fed hike is priced in, sticky inflation is probably priced in. A lot of things that we already know are normally already priced into the market. And so, you know, it's normally the things that we don't think about. Ukraine, we didn't know. You know, COVID, we didn't know. But then once it's out, a lot of it becomes priced in. And the market falling 20% would normally mean that it's priced in. Okay. So, uh, Elaine asked, what is the fair time frame to see capital gains? 10 years, 20 years, okay? What's a reasonable uh, rate of return we are looking at, right? Okay, so this is, a, this is a good one because, you know, 
the, the answer is depends when you invest in the cycle, right? And how much you invest. But if we divide up the markets and say, look, look at the one year rolling return, any period, like one year, one year, one year, one year, and see what the average return is, that's 7%, right? 7 point something percent. But if you invest for how long you never lose money in equity markets, that's about 12 to 15 years. So if you invest more than 15 years, never lose money in the equity market. Never ever in the history of mankind. So no, no, being say long term, means stock market. Uh, means uh, means um, you know big funds and things. Like if I yeah. buy Singtel, well, no, 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 no. If I buy, <laughs> if I buy Singtel, market. if I yeah. buy uh, uh, SPH, you know, or it can Silicon Valley Bank. Yeah, a Silicon Valley can go <laughs> zero, right? Yeah. So, so so broad market. If you invest for the over 15 years, you will not lose money. Um, and if you invest in the right point in the cycle, five, 10 years is a good period to see capital gains. Um, but over 30 years, you want to be invested for 30, 40, 50 years, right? Because then you start really compounding and it becomes an exponential return uh, for you. Okay, there's uh, a few questions on this. Yeah. So, lump sum investing versus dollar mm. cost averaging mm. or any other Kung Fu you can, you can share, your opinion. So, Depends on the cycle, but if you're investing in a downturn, lump sum obviously does worse than huh? dollar cost averaging. Downturn. Right? Downturn. Okay. In an upturn, lump sum always outperforms dollar cost averaging, right? Why? Because you put 100,000 when markets are zero, it goes up 10%. Oh, okay. And you're putting only 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, and you've lost the returns every time because the markets are going up. But what if I buy on crashes? Yeah, crashes, crashes are great, but you can't pick the bottom unless you're invested, of course, right? Of course. So you dollar cost average at the, on, in a downturn. Okay. And then when the markets are upturn, you put the lump sum, right? But you don't know whether the market is always going up or down. So lump sum over a long period of time does better. But we don't have peace of mind. We're very like scared to do lump sum. Like Lou just now, Amundi is no-brainer versus Line Global. BlackRock is no-brainer over the time, but he's still only put 50%, 25%, because we don't know. We, we, we're worried, right? And that's, that's because we are human beings. It's normal. We have emotions, right? Greed and fear. So those emotions is what we need to control. And doing this helps Lou to do, make the right decisions over time. And so lump sum is difficult for most people to do. And that's why dividing it up into regular savings plans or like break it into three or four installments gives us peace of mind. And giving peace of mind is really important because when we have peace of mind, we can think clearly and we make the right decisions. Okay. So do lump sum if you are confident and you're okay with it, but regular savings plans, Definitely you should do if you have regular income, like you're working and you have salaries, uh, you should definitely do regular uh, savings because you don't actually have all that money right now. Uh, but also, if you even if you have like 100,000 and you want to invest in it, you can divide it into two or three or four lump uh, investments. So what do you do? You are an investment expert. I'm, I've always been fully invested mostly with whatever I So have. how do you do? You, so I change you lump the sum or you DCA oh, or Lump sum. But okay. if I, my salary, my salary is, you know, DCA. DCA. It has to be DCA. Even you. Yeah, of course. Even you. You know, come on. No, you want to you invest as soon tell. as you can. Yeah, you can, you can, you can, you know, you know, you can spot and smell, buy this thing and sell this thing, right? You are, come on, you are, you're Sam, you are, you are so as my expert. Even you do this, DCA. this is like low class no, investors no, no, no. like it's us, right? smart thing to do, smart thing to do, especially for people who are not able to do lump sum. Yeah. Even expert like him does that okay yeah you know so so you don't pick individual stocks no i i used to do that at more stanley i outperformed for eight years but surely I, you can I tell die. i die tesla too much stress <laughs> and i'm doing professionally 24 7 i'm thinking only markets investing researching i meet i i, I have access to 10 cent founders like you know jack ma i meet and i ask questions about companies I get to you know access the best management, the best research from all the investment managers, and still I, I'm not outperforming all the time. I can't make you know the answers all the time, and you don't know. So yeah. even expert like him cannot beat the market. Yeah? What do you think your chances are? Those yeah. people who like to buy Alibaba, Tesla, okay, uh, individual stocks, you know, DBS, OCBC, oh all this kind of thing. Yeah. 
I, tough. It's tough. Yeah. Even professional investors find it tough. And now that I'm not full time looking at stocks, I, I do not trust myself to invest. So I invest in funds that have good managers or passive index funds. Broadly, a lot of it is passive and then some other products as well. But yeah. surely, surely, OCD, CDBS and UOB sure make money, right? Sure make money. How can, like if I close and I, these three banks are sure make money for the next 50 years. What do you think? Well, you may not lose money or you may lose not all your money, but you know, I think there's better options out there. Uh, diversified market options are much, much better than single stocks. We all know this. This is proven. This is historic for fact. Yeah. Okay. For an individual investor, this is not Mr. Lu saying. Uh, this is now a uh, mega freaking investment guru saying. Okay. So some people say, ah, Mr. Lu, you know standard, you whatever. Now this guy got 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 stars on his shoulders. Okay. Yeah. So you don't sell sell him, huh? Okay. All right. Maybe last two questions. So uh, what's your main portfolio? Yeah. So my main portfolio is actually the Endowers flagship portfolio. Your own. I built it, so I trust it. Um, so as I said, I think the S and P five hundred is great, but you know I want to be more diversified, and I also want exposure to dimensional. So I like the fact that I have the iShares, I have the Amundi, low cost passive index funds, lowest cost in Singapore, lowest cost in history. So that helps, and then I put dimensional funds in there because it gives us exposure to the proven factors of returns. And then it also gives us, um, you know, um, exposure to some of the best fixed income products as well. So I have a balanced portfolio normally, so 60% equity, 40% fixed income. But these days I've actually shifted to a 40% equity and 60% fixed income because I want to have a little bit more exposure in this cycle uh, to the fixed income side. Okay, uh, there's a guy uh, asked a very good question. Uh, in the current world situation right now, should we keep more cash? or keep investing, you know, what's the allocation should be like? No, I mean, I think, uh, assuming this is a dollar, like cost average in question, meaning that you have regular income every month coming in, you have a job, you have income, and you're saving aside uh, maybe 20% of that, or whatever it is, or your CPF goes into your OA, and the money's piling up there, you should be investing into the market every month. Because we don't know when the market is going to bottom. Maybe it's already bottom because markets this year coming in this year, everybody was bearish. Everybody says, oh, Fed is raising interest rates even more. Inflation is sticky. The market is up, you know, 8 to 10%. I saw that. Yes. So, <laughs> so you don't know what the market will do. And so you need to continue to invest because you cannot pick the bottom. So you continue to invest for the long term. Holding cash is the worst thing to do right now because cash doesn't give you anything. A lot of people put money into T-bills and fixed deposits, but I think you know in the US, what happened was $760 billion of money went out of bank deposits into money market funds. So it's almost a, a trillion dollars of money, uh, investors like individuals and institutions shifted money away from banks saying that's dangerous and put it into money market funds. That's why Endowas has always said you should use money market funds as an effective tool for liquidity management, investing in cash, because it gives you both good yield, but it doesn't lock you up. It doesn't lock your money up like fixed deposits does. It doesn't lock your money up like, you know, the T-bills. And many people think T-bill yields are great, but money market funds are giving you 4% or 5% in US dollars even. So even the Fullerton Cash Fund is giving you a uh, great yield. Like so what? you should 4.4%. Sing or US? Sing dollars is 4%. 4.3.94%. 4 4 really? Yeah. Risk free. Oh. So Risk free. It's never, last, throughout last year, it's never lost you money. So Sing dollar, Fullerton Cash Fund, US dollar funds, um, you should actually be investing in that because it gives you daily liquidity, no lockup. So you can take, put it in, take it out the next day, you know, whenever you want. On the Endows platform, you're investing in your CPF, your SRS, your cash. Safe, right? Only ones that you can do in a single platform is Endows. We built it that way. We got the CPF and the government approval to do this CPF investing. And now you can do money market funds. And then for AI investors, we also have alternatives and hedge funds and private equity, private credit, all the sophisticated stuff if you want to as well. Okay, this is a very good question. Mm -hmm. And I'll call it the last question because we have time's up, okay? Is that we passed our time? Yeah, <laughs> it's Singapore. 
Yeah. Are you invested in, are you personally invested in Singapore oh. and why not? I know it's no. <laughs> and, and I know I, is endowers invested in Singapore and I also know the answer is probably almost no. no. But why? Yeah. Because I guarantee you, you know, 80% of people here are like humongous amount in the Singapore equities or Singapore whatever. Yeah, I mean, look, it's not something that is wrong. There's no right or wrong. But the, the bottom line is that Singapore is a small market. It's 0.5% or less of 0.1%, I think, of the global market capitalization. So you think about it yourself. Like, where do you spend your money? Like, Singapore. In, in Singapore, do you spend your money through Amazon? Like, you know, you use Facebook, you use Google, you use Apple phones, okay. and you're using Netflix, you're spending money on Netflix, yeah. and you're spending money on global companies that are not Singapore companies, right? How much money are you spending on, you know, like uh, you, a lot of companies that, and, and really stock market is about a growth market, right? Companies need to grow to continue to maintain their valuation and grow uh, and generate returns for you over the cycle to give you returns. And so what are the best companies to invest in? Is it Singtel or is it Netflix? You know, it's, it's the, that kind of like understanding that Singapore is not everything, right? There is what's called a home bias. So Singaporeans will tend to invest in Singapore. Koreans will invest in Korea. US will invest in US. So there is a home bias when you're investing because you want to invest in things that you're more familiar with. But as I said, a lot of global companies are much more familiar to us now. So you need to diversify away from just Singapore. It's like diversifying away from just a single stock into broad markets. Diversify away from just Singapore to Asia, emerging market, you know, developed market, global markets. And global market return gives you the most stable, less volatile return over the cycle, you know, up and down. So Singapore is not, I'm not bashing Singapore. It's not that Singapore is bad. It's just that Singapore is such a small piece of the global market. You want a broader exposure to generate the returns in a more stable and risk, less risky way. All right, cool. Okay, our time is up. There's a lot more questions. I've missed out a gazillion questions as well. Please forgive me. We just, just too many questions and time's up. You can ask those questions uh, in the, te the one and six size Telegram chat group, okay? Uh, okay we will we know if, first of all, we've got people around hours answering this question as well. We've got community expert doing a cross uh, 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 balance, a uh, check and balance as well. And when the questions are, are important, uh, I'll get uh, Sam to answer those questions as well. Okay? Great. Cool. Okay. Thank we'll do well, it again. Thanks, man. We'll do thanks, it again. For, thanks for joining us. Thank okay. You. And uh, Thank all you guys, uh, you know. We're going we're gonna to have charge you soon. <laughs> now we know where it is. Cool. Yes. yes. Okay, cool. Thank you okay. for letting us know. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Okay. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this session. And again, to our Muslim uh, uh, brothers and sisters, you know, Salamat Hari Raya and have a great holiday. Okay. Great holiday. <laughs>